everyone it's Lou Collins from Craft Stash. Today I'd like to talk you through mixed media because this is something that lots of us want to have a go at um, but are a little bit scared of basically making a mess not knowing where to start so I'm going to run you through the most common mixed media mistakes so that you can avoid them and end up with your first project being one that you're really proud of. I'm going to run through lots and lots of tips and tricks with you all whilst creating a small mixed media piece that can either go in a frame, go into an art journal or go onto the front of a card, whichever your preference. If you enjoy videos like this, don't forget, of course, to subscribe to the Craft Stash YouTube channel. You'll find links for lots of things that I'm using down in the description below and a thumbs up and a share would be fantastic. Now let's get on with the tutorial. So as I've already alluded to, I'm going to start small with this. I would always say start small. If you are faced with a large 12 by 12 piece of cardstock that you intend on doing a mixed media scrapbook page with, you're going to become overwhelmed with needing to fill that space. The same with albums. A lot of album pages are, for example, A5, larger than five by seven usually. It's still quite a, a relatively large space to have to fill when you're thinking about colours, mediums, textures, dimension. So starting small, this is A6 or A2 if you're in the US and I'm using a watercolour cardstock which is my second point. The base that you are putting everything down onto is really important. You don't want to use an average card base. This is why I work on a watercolour cardstock, usually one that's at least 300 GSM and then I apply it to a normal card base or a, an art journal for example. I don't work directly onto those. This is because this is a heavyweight paper or cardstock and this is going to be able to hold our mediums. So for example, our sprays, our paints, our inks, our pastes, it's going to hold them absolutely fine without any warping and without anything sort of bleeding through. Now I've got lots of tools around me as you can see. I'm not going to be using everything though, I'm going to pick and choose. I've been doing mixed media for many years and I kind of know now when to stop and that is another really good point. You can put too much onto a mixed media project. Now I'm appreciating at the moment you're seeing a lot of hand waving and not much doing. Um, let's talk you start, let's putting things down and talk you through. So we want to start with really three layers is what you want to aim for and then you can add bits in after that. The three layers would be for me, I would add a layer of colour. This would usually be inks, sprays, things like this, maybe paint. Then I'll add a layer of texture, and that would be uh, things like my stencils, maybe a textured die cut, maybe uh, some pastes there, or even some stamping. And then I would add a focal point on top. Once you've got those three down, you can start adding in little bits of embellishments and additional color and such if you want it. So let's start with our color. Now I have got for my uh, desk just to protect everything and you probably want a larger one like this um, if you're going directly onto your desk. I'm already on a craft mat but this is just going to help me with inking. I'm going to just put some colour down first. Now I have already got in mind what my focal point is going to be. So I'm going to have these florals. This is washi sheets from the Texture Spring Awakening range. This floral is kind of going to be my focal point, okay? I might put some words over there as well. This is the main thing. So I'm going to take those colours and I think I'm going to use the, uh, I'm actually going to use some pale blues and greens in there so that the green stands out from that. Maybe a touch of pink. So to do this, I'm going to start with some water. Now, as I said, we're working onto a watercolour cardstock. This is just going to help everything blend. So I've put some water on here and I'm going to put some ink. This could be from an ink pad. This could be from a spray bottle. I'm using an oxide spray here and I'm going to water that down. This way, we're not applying too much colour in any place at any one time. And I'm just going to touch that onto the surface of my paper using the acrylic, or rather, sorry, the acetate here. And this is just going to help me see through and see whereabouts I'm placing everything. There. I could even get some of those spots off. So as you can see, I've just added a bit of colour. Nothing too dramatic. I've not been precise with it. I'm going to keep adding colour like that in layers until I'm happy with my first layer, which is the colour. But speaking of colour, you can go a little bit crazy with the colours as well. So you want to ideally stick with 
with three or four colours only, um, again certainly in the beginning. And with every layer I'm going to just lift up some of that colour as well. Now what I love about this is we've actually got some greens going on there as well which is perfect but I do want to add some more green so while that's damp it's, it's started to dry but I'm going to add some water, a little bit of a green so this is Rustic Wilderness again it's an oxide spray, a little bit more water I think that's going to be a bit much because it's such a deep colour. I do love that it's in the shape of a heart completely by accident. Let's just lift some of that up. So we're just working with the tiniest little bit and just add this in. Now at the minute this is all going in straight lines which I don't want so I'm bending my acrylic. So I've now got the blues and the greens. Now I'm sticking, as you can see, to one part of my area of cardstock as well. I'm probably going to call this my page or my card as we go through this tutorial. I'm sticking to one area. Um, this is because I work with the rule of thirds and I tend to only cover around about a third of my area, my card, my page. Um, and that's where my focal point will be, is just in that third. That leaves white space around the outside. Now you may well bring elements into the white space later on, but the main part, the bit that we're doing now, the colour, the texture and the focal point will be in around about a third of the card. Okay, so I'm just going to add a few little specks of this pink. And this is going to bring in a little bit of the pink that's in those florals, really not much at all. And for this, I'm not going to do it in the same way. I'm really going to water down this beautiful pink colour and I'm going to take a paintbrush. I'm going to mix that up, soak the bristles of my brush and I'm just going to flick some colours over here. So this is my first layer, although there's uh, a few different colours in here. This is layer number one and this is my colour. Okay. That's plenty for me there. Now when you are working with mixed media it is really handy to have a heat tool aside. You don't always have to use it but I like to dry things like this ink off first and that way I know that I'm not going to smudge or ruin what I've already put down. Now it is a common misconception that mixed media needs to be grungy and dark. It absolutely doesn't. That's not what I'm going to be doing here. Mixed media is simply mixing your mediums, so paper, glue, metal, ink sprays, pastes, all of these different things added together in a card. And it doesn't have to be everything either. As I've said at the beginning, less really is more. Pick three elements ideally and stick with those. So I've got my colour down, my first layer. My second layer is now my texture. Now this could be by cutting something like this die, tearing it out. I cut it from white so it stands out against that colour and I'd glue that on. Now you can, if you want to, add the texture first and the colour second. Really depends on the mediums and the techniques that you're going to be doing. I'm going to do it this way instead today. You can also use stencils for your texture, which I may well do. I think this is the way that I might be going and this is going to be with texture paste. I think I would probably go with the starburst there. And this is a really nice way of attracting the eye into a so uh, focal point as well because I can put this sun sunburst or starburst in the centre where my floral is going to be. You can also add texture with stamping. Usually stamping would then be darker. You could do it as heat embossing, so you could make it white, for example, or another colour. Stamping usually would be black or brown, and you wouldn't just stamp the whole image. You'd just do parts of it. Again, if you're just beginning, I would probably only choose one of these options. So I'm going to go with the stenciling today. As I said, I'm going to put the starburst down, and I'm going to place that just so that it really draws the eye into the centre of that coloured splodge that we've created. And I'm going to use white because this is going to stand out really nicely against the colour. It's almost going to look as if the colour was resisted around this shape, which is something you can do with certain mediums as well. So just holding my stencil down and dragging the paste through it using a spatula and something else I like to do if I am using texture paste and stencil rather than having a harsh edge and going with my paste all the way to the edge I tend to like to fade it out a little bit so I just scrape bits of paint off or rather paste off 
over the outer edges but I'm not precise about making sure I get it all the way to the outer edge so I kind of fade it out in a way gently lift that up and I've got my starburst there's some beautiful texture in there I've still got the center which really stands out too now make sure you wash this really quickly if you've used texture paste as you can see I really didn't use much at all a lot of it's going back in the pot now again because texture paste is wet I am going to dry this layer off too now a mistake I have seen with mixed media with a lot of people is choosing your colors so that they go muddy so for example we all know red and green go to brown if you choose those two together you're going to get brown it's going to almost be the overriding color throughout your project so make sure you're picking just two or three colors that sit nicely together and if they do mix together they make a really pretty color and not just a muddy yucky color now a common mistake that I see people making all the time is not having this focal point. So you may have built up your background and then just have a tag here, a tag there, um, a ticket there, a stamp here. And it's just kind of, it's what I call pizza topping. It's a little bit of everything spread everywhere. Instead, you want to focus on one area and have a focal point, and that's what this is going to be. And I always predetermine this before I start my project, unless I'm just trying out a background technique, and then I decide to continue with the page. Usually, this, as I say, is predetermined. This is going to be a washi sheet of beautiful florals, but you could alternatively use something like a tag, which has an embellishment on it, or a center sentiment there's so much that you can have as your focal point so this is going to go over a lot of what we've already done now I've put this washi sheet on and I feel that's just too big it's just covered up all of the work that I've already done so I'm going to gently very gently peel this off now, if you are removing a tape, a washi sheet, uh, something that's been adhered down and you're worried about tearing the underneath, it's not the end of the world because in actual fact, you can get some fantastic textures by uh, tearing your paper. So rather than that large image, I'm going to come to something smaller. I've got lots in here this is beautiful we've got uh, beautiful stems and florals here i might just put uh, a couple of these on instead that's much much better i can see the florals on there they're really pretty really delicate now what i am going to do is i'd like the person who's looking at this i'd like their eye to travel around the page without taking away from the focal point but also without actually covering up that white space that we've created and want to keep so I'm going to take another one of these florals, something really small and delicate like this rose here, a little bit of the pink and green in there, and I'm just going to place that down in the bottom corner. I'll fold that over. Just so there's a little something here to look at, and I'm going to do the same, I think I'll do it with, let's just flip through what we've got here. Yeah, this leaf here. So this is the green. And I'm going to place some leaves at the in the top, the opposite top corner here. Now, what this is doing is this is going to allow the person's eye to travel around the page. You'll always come in to here, but you'll start here and you'll travel. So you've filled the whole page. You, it's kind of a three-point thing, a triangle, which we use a lot in design. So, so far we have got our three layers. We've got our colour, we've got our texture and we've got our focal point and I've kept it all really simple. Lastly, we just need to add our embellishments now. This can be something like a sentiment. Um, it can be stitching, a frame, uh, any other embellishments. So if you've got something like metal embellishments, you'd like to add those on. Uh, these are going to, this is the perfect time to put it on, always at the end. So I'm going to first of all go with my sentiment and because at the moment I don't have much in the way of contrast here, it's probably going to be something that's bright white. So from my textures range, I have the sentiments for all paper pad. And this is so perfect for snipping out small sentiments that you want to use in either black or white because each sentiment is in both colors. 
I'm just going to trim this down there's a little bit of a black slither at the top but again I want this bright white I want this to really stand out but still be nice and delicate against the rest of the page now I'm not going to just put that straight on I'm going to snip this I usually try to snip it into three if possible and then this will go over my sentiment over my focal point like so so this now becomes as much the focal point as the flowers I'm going to glue these straight down another lovely way of adding a sentiment is stamping if you have um, a lot of texture in there you may find that you can't stamp onto your background when you're working with mixed media you can take some tissue paper stamp onto that and glue that on or you could even stamp onto something like some clear tape create your own washi and then stick the sentiment on okay so i'm almost finished with this little mixed media piece that's been kept really simple i've now got black in the letters so i feel like i can add a little bit more black this is going to be framing things and it's my very last step if there's any areas that i feel need framing just to either close them in so the page i nearly always frame so this is just going to be a doodled line i think if you're doing mixed media it's a good idea to do some hand drawing some hand doodling some hand lettering something like that to make it more personal but it also adds to yet another medium that you've applied to your page so i've got a bit of texture paste there i'm just going along with the black fine liner pen just working around the texture paste and just doing a little bit of a wobbly hand drawn line around and that's really frames the page I'm then going to do that just around my letter squares here as well or rectangles and just frame these and that will make those stand out a little bit from everything else in the background now although I said framing everything was going to be my final step but it's kind of made me want to add a little bit more so you can absolutely stop there if you feel like you've done enough you don't want to overpower your piece that's perfect I want to show you just one more technique that I use if I need very very subtle color or texture and that's I bring in my gel plate so on my gel plate I am going to stamp um, a little bit of black text and I'm going to go with black because I really like the addition of the black here against the color the pale colors so I'm going to add a tiny little bit of text now this is going to be around this floral and around this floral so it's not in the center so I'm just going to stamp with this large book page background stamp onto my gel plate here and if I was to stamp this directly onto my page it would just be too dark but by putting it onto there I can then just tap this and this way also helps with me being a little more random not stressing too much so I'm just going to tap this ever so gently with two fingers onto the back of the card and can you see there I've got the tiniest little bit of text what a fun technique I really think everyone should have a gel plate in their stash even if they don't do gel plate printing it's perfect for stamping techniques like this and if you are interested in a gel plate you've never seen one used before but you'd like to have a go we do have a fantastic video just here that will take you to everything you need to know about using a gel plate so go and check that out and if you enjoy making a mixed media card or art journal page with me today we'd love it if you could subscribe to our channel and don't forget everything i've used you'll find linked down in the description below take care everybody i'll see you again very soon